Praise God, praise God, like a ship without a sail. We bless the Lord tonight, and we give him glory, honor, and praise. Blessings to all of you joining us tonight for this special edition of uh, the Interdenominational Assembly of Churches, our regular time that we would normally have our fellowship worship. But tonight we're going to be on and sharing together today in the Word of God. What I'd like for you to do, friends, if you don't mind, uh, start your watch parties and certainly uh, like and share, like and share, and uh, we're going to have a good time tonight. You'll be able to join us in the comment section and uh, share with us. If you want to make a comment or just ask a question, uh, share with us if you will. We'll be happy to share with you. It's a very special time in the world today. 
And I always say that sometimes. What are you talking about? I just woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. The fact that I was blessed to see another day is a, a blessing all in itself. So we praise God and give him glory. Uh, we're going to uh, look at our passage of scripture tonight. We're going back and we're going to be speaking about let's go back to God. Let's go back to God. And um, we, we got special references in the word of God. I pray that those of you that would chime in with us tonight that you are a lover of the word uh, because we want to share uh, passages of scripture with you to hear what uh, God has said uh, in the Old Testament and some in the New Testament concerning returning back to him, forsaking our way, forsaking the way of unrighteousness, the way of sin, forsaking our will and giving over and giving our heart unto him. Uh, but the operative word will be, and I want you to follow with us in scripture, is return, which notes in our mind that evidently we were in one at one point in time in right standing and right relationship with God the Father. And somewhere, oh my God, the covenant was broken, not on his part, but on our part. A lot of folk are trying to go all the way back and blame uh, Adam and Eve. But uh, uh, those of you who never met Adam and Eve, <laughs> none of us, uh, we call Adam the, the fallen Adam, the academic uh, spirit or the academic nature of man is disobedient. So my brothers and sisters, we, we want to uh, find our way back uh, to our God. Uh, we talk about him. We, we sing about him. Uh, we dance. We shout. Uh, we pray to him. And uh, we claim that we worship him. We claim that we actually love him. But at some point uh, that the scripture uh, would remind us there's been a flaw in the relationship, whether it was by communication or deeds that we've done, uh, our attitude, our disposition. And uh, it's an old proverb that I I've, I've grew up hearing. I don't know who's the author of it, but I, I love to repeat it because it, it brings along with it a hint of uh, responsibility and accountability to those of us uh, who will uh, hear this, that love is what love does. And so my brothers and sisters, those of us who claim our love for the Lord Jesus Christ and for God himself, the Father, then um, we just can't be uh, speaking about it and talking about it. Uh, we're talking loud and saying nothing and our hearts are far from it. Who can know it but God? So tonight we're gonna, we're gonna revisit scripture and uh, I believe some of our pastors may chime in. And as soon as I see their wonderful faces, uh, we will uh, ask them to dive in and to share commentary on the subject as we look at scripture today. I am I'm really excited about this as I was looking uh, earlier today over passages of scripture. Uh, we must understand uh, the basis of the word of God and how the word of God uh, is, is uh, important to us. We must look at it on that wise, and then we must understand it on that wise, that the only way we can understand who God is, is to hear him explain and identify and introduce properly himself through his spoken word. 
and my brothers and sisters, we really have no excuse uh, because we have the word of God as our road map. The old preachers say the word of God is simply a road map to better living. And um, we are charged with that, that we understand that God has given his word that we might uh, live by it, that we might prosper by it, that we might understand it, where it will be a blessing to us. And uh, you know what Paul says, first of all, before we start, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse number 16, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine and for reproof, for correction in instruction and in righteousness. Verse 17, that the man of God may be perfect, fairly furnished unto all good works. Now, now that is the word of God and the premise and why it is so important that when we speak on certain subject matter, that we will uh, definitely talk from a scriptorial standpoint or scriptorial base that we can understand what God is saying to us, uh, why he is saying what he is saying to us. I, I think that uh, we, we've got a pretty good, uh, if I can use this vernacular, a pretty good deal that, that God does not judge us beyond our knowledge. In other words, he don't hold you accountable for what you don't know, but now that you know. And that's why I tell people, once you hear the gospel uh, preached or taught, then you become responsible and accountable to that which you've been exposed to. So let us, let us keep that in mind because as we hear the word of God, we know that the word of God comes as a reproof and word of God comes as correction and the word of God comes as instruction. And so thank God that even though he reproves us and uh, chastises us or correct us, he also have included in his word uh, proper instructions whereby we can uh, be reclaimed or reconciled back to him if in that case we are found weighed in the balance and warning without having a good relationship with God our Father. Now, our base scripture, when we started this series, uh, we used two passages of scripture, and uh, we're going to just read those, and then we're going to also do a brief narrative tonight on some other passages of scripture that are relevant and uh, will help give us even more balance so that we can understand what God is saying to us. Well, um, here's the word of God in, in the book of one of the minor prophets, prophet Zechariah chapter one and verse number three, therefore say thou unto them, he's telling the prophet to speak, thus said the Lord of hosts, turn ye unto me, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will turn unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. I must read verse four. Be ye not as your fathers, unto whom the former prophets have cried, saying, thus saith the Lord, turn ye now from your evil ways and from your evil doings. And, but they did not hear nor hearken unto the Lord. And so my friends, we find God sending the man of God uh, to uh, encourage them to turn from not only their, their evil ways, but doing evil. And um, their attitude, their disposition evidently was not approved by God. 
And uh, God even warns them by the prophet, don't be like your fathers. Don't carry the tradition over. Don't, don't be idolatrous. Don't be uh, liars and thieves and, and whoremongers and uh, blasphemous. Don't, don't do it. I'm a jealous God. And, and so he, Zechariah gives uh, the people of God the warning of God that was given to him to give to them. You know, a lot of people, uh, when, you, when you run up on a prophet uh, like this, uh, I wonder, I wonder today, I know in the New Testament, uh, we under the dispensation of grace, those that understand the ministry of reconciliation, where well, the prophet comes uh, to uh, also build and uh, instruct and lead and to guide. And he does it with loving kindness as Jesus did. And he does it with tender, tenderness, excuse me. And uh, it is so important in how we relate things of God, even in times of chastisement, judgment, even in times of rebuke and times of, of reproof or correction, and even in giving instructions. We, we do it in love. All praise is wonderful name. And so that's why uh, when you read companion scriptures, you, you need to get the fullness and the understanding of why God is saying what he's saying and uh, to whom he's talking to at that particular time. Then we used Malachi chapter three and uh, verse number seven. Uh, Malachi chapter three, verse number seven. This, this is uh, the prophet's word that God had given him. And he says this, even from the days of your fathers, ye have gone away from my ordinances. Here, here is the actions of the people that evidently moved and prompted God to speak out against uh, their, the air of their ways. You have gone away from mine ordinances, my rules, my regulations, my instructions, and have not kept them. You, you just put them aside and you just decided to uh, create your own righteousness and uh, do all of that kind of thing. And, 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 and here is what he says now. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But ye said, wherein shall we return? As if you're not conscious of the fact that you've stumbled along the way and made some errors. Well, you know, that I know that's Old Testament. A lot of people just don't like Old Testament. Um, but he said they, they didn't keep God's ordinances. That, that's what he told the prophet to remind them of. You, did, you didn't keep the ordinances that I gave you. And, uh, uh, and Paul, what he does in a companion scripture in Romans 10, he says it like this, brother, my prayer, or my, my heart, my desire, is that uh, for God to save you. Let me read the King James Version. Brother, in my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record, uh, they, they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. And then verse three says, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Listen, friends, this is why uh, as, you, as you study your word, you, you want to make sure that you research and scan the Bible uh, enough to make sure you are landing in safe territory 
to uh, get the fullness of the complete revelation on any subject matter that has to do with God speaking to us directly. And, and, and you've got to understand this. He, God uses uh, his, his word, he uses things, material things, he uses nature, and then he uses humanity to speak to us. In this case, uh, in the case of Malachi, in the case of Zechariah, uh, he used those prophets to speak directly to the heart of the matter, not behind their backs, not send them a message or a note, but to actually speak directly. Uh, we called it face to face. Uh, he faced them with a word of instruction, a word of reproof a word that gave direction and instruction that ultimately could lead them back to a place of promise and uh, to be reconciled back to God in right standing and relationship. Relationship with God, my brothers and sisters, is paramount. It is everything. Out of all that you do, I don't care how well you preach. I don't care how well you sing. You speak in tongues, whatever you do, you prophesy, all of that. If he don't know you, stop by Matthew 7. You can, you can prophesy, you can lay hands, you can do all of that, you know, in his name. But if he don't know you, oh my God. If the Lord Jesus Christ don't know you, if you do not have a relationship with the Savior, then how can you have one with the Father? You must come in at the door. He is the way, the truth, and the life. My brothers and sisters, this is so paramount uh, on this day, this 11th day of the third month, of the year 2022. It is important that we take a look at who we are based on whose we are and the purpose that God has continued or extended your days and mine. Why are you here? What purpose are you serving? Have you yet to find out what that purpose is? You know, and, and, and let, let me just drop this in and segue to this because too many people have their hearts and minds set on titles and positions. All of us are glorified servants. Basically, that's it. Uh, the bishop, the apostle, the presider, the prelate, the pope, whoever the superintendent, um, the Sunday school teacher, the chairman of the board, the deacon, the ursher, the nurse, the minister of music, the minstrel, whatever y'all want to call them. We're basically servants in the eyes of God. And my brothers and sisters, we've got to get an understanding of why we serve and who we serve. And it's on his terms and in the terms of that, the terms and conditions, you know, just like when you buy something or you order something, you buy online, shop online, uh, and, and you uh, subscribe uh, to certain venues virtually or so, you know, everything you have in life now comes with terms and conditions, you know, and you, you've got to hit the little checkbox online, whether you agree or not. You know, if, you, if you're paying for something online, they take you to that. You know, you are ordering from a certain store, your favorite. You know, you go by the terms and conditions uh, and, and, and you decide, well, uh, and most folks, I'm gonna tell you the truth because I used to be like that. I didn't, didn't read all of the terms and conditions until one day I had to uh, uh, submit a cancellation 
And I had to go back to the terms and conditions and look at the cancellation policy and the refund policy based on them uh, messing up my order uh, by mail or by delivery, okay? The Bible has terms and conditions, okay? You just don't go to bed unsaved and wake up saved. You don't go to bed, you know, uh, a devil and wake up the next morning the same. You know, you just don't put the Bible on top of your head and decide it's going to uh, transfer knowledge into your mind, into your spirit. You know, you, you, you got to go the way prescribed by the Bible, you know, and, and uh, I pray that those of you who call yourselves students of the Bible, disciples, you know, which are learners, that, that you're willing to take the time to learn and submit to that to understand, you know, the, the, the ins and outs of this thing. Second Timothy 2 Timothy 2.15 says that we study to show ourselves approved unto God, work with that need not be ashamed, that we can rightly divide the word of truth. But earlier, uh, Paul says uh, to his son Timothy, 2 Timothy 2.2, 2, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. You know, what are, what are we teaching? We're not, we're not reinventing the wheel. We're, we're, we're just stewards of the word of God. We've been given a charge. I, I say this all the time and when I taught uh, uh, in school and, and taught at Wayne County Community College, the fundamentals of music, uh, each, each semester, uh, when they went through the required hours and uh, they went on to the next course, you know, my syllabus did not change. Sometime I updated the methods and did different things in how I relayed the same outline, the same course factors, because even though whatever you teach, if you're going to teach that, you, you may teach to this class, a group of students, and then the next semester you have another group of students, but you are teaching the same premise, the same outline, the instructions do not bend or change, okay? You cannot change four and four equal eight, six and two equal eight. Uh, uh, there, there are variations to get to the number eight but the ultimate goal is to get there. And those of you that deal with mathematics, you understand the levels of that. You start from learning how to count, and then you learn your addition, your subtraction, uh, your multiplication, your division, and you move on uh, to algebra, calculus, you keep on going. Uh, trigonometry, all of the advanced stuff as you go. But you won't learn the essence of trigonometry or algebra until you learn how to count first. So you got to start somewhere. And the word of God is, is, is such an awesome tool of instruction that, that gives us the premise of what we need in the word of God. Now, I, I want to scan through scriptures and prayerfully, you will be able to go back in your own private time of study, and um, you'll be able to do research and do find commentary on these passages of scripture. Uh, uh, let me just read Isaiah chapter 55, verse number seven. Let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return to the Lord, and he will have compassion on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. God is a forgiving God, but you got to take the step. First of all, admission is really part of the key. A lot of folk, uh, because they've gotten by so long, they think they've gotten away. 
And uh, getting by don't mean you scot-free or you've gotten away. That's just time for you to be reclaimed or to repent or to, in this case that we're talking about, your opportunity to return. And uh, my brothers and sisters, this, this is paramount. I can't stress this subject enough. And, and, and uh, I'm doing this to show you the repetition of God as he spoke to several different prophets in the history of the people of God, of the history of the nation Israel. You know, Zechariah, Jeremiah, Isaiah, these different men of God, Hosea, the ones that he spoke to concerning their particular stands and uh, their relationship to the one they say they love, which is God our creator, okay? And so this, this is all important. Isaiah chapter 44, verse 22. I have wiped out your transgressions like a thick cloud and your sins like a heavy mist. Return unto me. I have redeemed you. My brothers and sisters, what more can we ask for from the Lord? I have redeemed you. Blessings, Pastor Starworth and Pastor Mark Gray. Listen, y'all turn your mics on so y'all can chime in. Uh, and, and grab a piece of this pie and help me serve this up tonight so the people can, what my grandfather used to call, can dine sufficiently, scrumptiously on the word of God. The table is spread and the feast of the Lord is going on now. You know, God said, return. Pastor Starworth, let, me, you, sir. let me hear you, woman of God. Amen. I'm I'm um, sorry I got in so late, but I'm I got in right on time. You hear? This is a a message that um, the prophets began to to preach to the people in the Old Testament that's still being preached today. That God is married to the backslider and that he is uh, a forgiving God, he's a merciful God. And um, initially, well, we thank God today that the sins of the forefathers are not on the children, but we know that when Zechariah preached this, he was talking um, to the people and telling them not to follow the transgressions of their forefathers, their ancestors, their parents. And um, the reason, the whole reason they were in captivity at, at that time, they were in, in the captivity in Babylon was because of the transgressions of their forefathers. And so when you, when you continue um, in this message in, in um, Malachi, it is preaching the same thing. If you return to me, I will return to you. And, uh, and uh, it goes on to talk about the tide in that chapter mm -hmm. in, in Malachi. And it tells them that, you know, you would a man rob God, you know, and uh, if you love me, then you will take care of me then you provide for me and and that message hasn't changed either today um those that say they love god but they hold back the tide from the house of god and they they have lots of reasons bishop mm. but uh, it's important that they are faithful to god in both their lifestyle 
and in, in their giving. Um, wow. That's a great. Let, 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 let me ask you, uh, I know all of us, uh, one of the most famous stories in the Bible passage of scripture is Psalms 51, where David asked the Lord to have mercy according to his loving kindness, according to unto his multitude of his tender mercy, to blot out my transgression, wash me thoroughly and uh, from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Now he's admitting his stuff, for I acknowledge my transgressions and my sins are ever before thee, against thee, and thee only have I sinned and have done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. So he already knew what was, what was going on, but what's intriguing to me after he goes through all of that, uh, jump down to verse number 13, he talks about after he's, God creates a clean heart with him and washes him and restores him, you know, uh, that's the key. He got restored. Then he says, uh, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with the, uh, thy free with thy free spirit. Then he says, then I will teach transgressors thy way and sinners shall be converted. Uh, 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 Pastor, just give us some, 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 some heavenly tidbits and commentary on that. Pastor Gray, if you will, chime in and uh, share a word with us. Uh, I think you're still on mute. Are you there? Are you there? All right. I see him, but I don't hear him. All right. But well, we were looking you know, at- No, uh, Bishop, yeah, I go think ahead. that that is um, one of the true signs of, of repentance is when you are humble before God and you're transparent. And when you come to God and you and you know and have a, a clarity of your sin and you know that God is the only one who can resolve you of that, who could uh, wipe away that, that, the guilt and the pain of sin. And uh, that Psalm is one of the most beautiful because it speaks to us in our condition, when whenever we're going through anything, we have to come transparent before God, and we we you know we need to talk to Him um, as a matter of fact. You know what I'm saying? Um, mm -hmm. To let Him know how we have messed up, you know, just messed up, and ask Him to forgive us. And God is merciful. Yeah. Thank God. He's a merciful God, loving God, and he is gracious. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He is creation. He's gracious to us. Yeah, I, I always, every time, I don't know how, can we, how many times I read that story, it, it still perks me up and I, I look to uh, watch the contract spirit of David, uh, knowing what he had done. Uh, years ago, I preached a sermon which was entitled, Lord, get me out of this and get this out of me. You know, a lot of times we, we, um, we want God to get us out of stuff, out of things that, that, that we create problems and situations, but, but we, we never talk about uh, getting whatever the root cause of it that's in us in our thoughts, in our minds, in our hearts, you know, to be thoroughly wiped clean and cleansed. That's why when I, when I look at Psalms 51, it's always encouraging as a reminder, you know, we know what we do wrong. You right. Know, you know, you know, we don't need nobody to ring the bell or, no. or pull the emergency, the alarm and sound the trumpet, you know, uh, we no don't, lights to go off, huh? No, we don't need the lights going off. 
Because, you know, if, 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 the, if we all tell the truth about it, there's some things we, we, we you know, we guilty of premeditation. <laughs> oh, yeah. We guilty of planning to do some stuff. And, uh, uh, and some stuff we did by association, we followed the crowd and we did what everybody else was doing. And because it just seemed to be the end thing or the right thing to do, or we followed tradition and uh, we went along to get along. And um, I, I lost a lot of friends when I woke up to myself, my ignorance and my blindness, my, my spiritual drought that I was facing. I'm like, you know what? They fooling around now. I don't mind going to hell for my stuff, but if, I ain't going for y'all's now. Come on. I'm not going to follow y'all because you jump off the Bell Isle Bridge. I'm not jumping off of it. You know, this is where this is where this cuts off. You know, uh, we're talking about life now. We're talking about our salvation and our standing relationship with God. And one of the things that's so convicting in this particular story, uh, it, it, it speaks to my heart all the time, is because of who David was, you know. Uh, 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 and, and we've got to look at who we are in God. David had the privilege of being considered a man after God's own heart. You know, we got, we got to look at that. He was the king. He had privileges available to him. He, he I mean, uh, he had the money. He, he had the authority. He had the accommodations. He had opportunity. I mean, you know, Bishop, yes, sometimes that's that's the problem. Is that we the problem? <laughs> too much. We got too much. You know, yeah. uh, the the problem was that we become self righteous, and yeah. we begin to think that we are allowed more than anyone else. That we are allowed to transgress, and. Um, because we have this position of authority or privilege and uh, you know, um, we become prophesied. We, we just, <laughs> just, you know, we just become all kinds of things because it suits us. Not that it's godly or spiritual or even okay. biblical, you know, yeah. but it suits us for the moment. So we figure, well, we can, tell a little white lie to for the greater good my, you know my, and my. that's where we get caught up you know uh, and, and and yeah you know it's not um satan is the father of lies yes you know? yeah. so we become his children when mm -hmm. we do that yeah yeah it's it's just so ironic that we have this account that's so historical and, and so well uh, uh, read and, and uh, popular in Christendom because uh, a lot of people, you know, they stop at those verses. Oh, wash me with hyssop, creating me a clean heart, oh God, and I shall, you know, we stop at that, we holler and hoop on on that. But, but what really started getting me is, is I kept on reading and, and different times I read it, I keep getting something new or I, I get more added on to uh, right. what I got the last time. And, and uh, out of everything that used to stick out to me, uh, reading it most recently, just that verse, when he said, verse 13, then will I teach transgressors your way. And, and they're going to be converted. Here I am asking for forgiveness of my transgressions. And now you've restored me. So I, I have a responsibility now right. you know, to tell others, you don't have to stay in the shape that you're in. Thank you, V. Michael McKay, for that right. song. The potter wants to put you back together again. Right. You know, so, so. To all of us, we, we are privileged that we serve a merciful God. 
And that's why I tell folk all the time, grace is a gift, not a goal. For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves, just the gift of God, you know, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, not of works, lest any man should boast. Nothing we can do to save ourselves. And so uh, if, 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 if we take note to David, before we share a couple of more scriptures, if we take note to David, then what we ought to be doing in our state of reconciliation, of being reconciled or forgiven, we ought, we ought to make it a must to grab those folk that we left and teach transgressors God's way so that they can be not just saved, but do you hear the word, the New Testament word in the Old Testament? Convert it. Oh yeah. my God, if we, we haven't seen uh, enough conversions lately. We, people go to church and people join church. People get in the water, get baptized. But we've got to see folk on through to conversion. And, and, and the only way they're gonna do that is by the word of God. You know, did, did Pastor Gray get in? Uh, I, I think I still see him on my screen, but uh, I don't have any sound on him. Uh, all right, here, 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 here is, here is other scripture, I, and brothers and sisters, I, I, I'm really doing this because I want us to pay attention to the repetition of the Word of God, that God is speaking to us over and over and over again. Uh, to, to give us clarity on what he wants us to understand. Jeremiah chapter four, verse one. If you will return, O Israel, declares the Lord, then you uh, should return to me. And if you would put away your detested things from my presence and not waver, Listen, all of us perhaps have been, you know, guilty of kind of, the old folks call it straddling the fence, or we've been shaky, or we wavered in our faith, even when it comes to trusting and believing God for what he's already promised and said to us concerning us in our circumstances today. We, we, we've, got to, we've got to understand that, that Paul teaches that faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And that's why I tell people all the time, you, you cannot dismiss God's way of dealing with humanity. He uses humanity to deal with humanity. Amen. That's why he used the prophets. And, and in 2022, you all, you may not, you may not like them. You may not uh, have picked them. You you might have your choice, voice, preacher, pastor, prophet, about whatever, you know. Which which we got to be careful of that, be, because we need to pray for a, a discerning heart and a discerning spirit, so that that we don't miss God. Because Paul declares that. Uh, Satan can transform himself into an angel of light until he will look like you want him to look or like you desire. He can have the charisma. He can sound. You or she, whoever they are, uh, does not mean they are a true authorized representative of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why the gift of the Holy Ghost, the gift of the Holy Spirit, is so important in our conversion experience. Uh, Amen. You remember how Nicodemus went to Jesus? You know, some theologians said, well, he didn't want nobody to see him or uh, he might've been too proud or he didn't want to show his lack of understanding because of his uh, position of authority. And uh, he didn't want to look like, you know, he didn't know what the Lord was teaching earlier, but he got to him and Jesus didn't bite his tongue. 
you know, he told him, he said, uh, I want to know what you was talking about. He said, yeah, you yeah, got to yeah. be born again. You got to be baptized, not just of the water, but of the spirit. Well, how can you got to be born again? Very, verily, I say unto you, truly, truly, you must be born again. How can a man enter a second time in his mother's womb? I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about born of the spirit, uh, born again, so you won't have to die again. Oh, bless his wonderful name. Two births with one death. Because if we don't get the, 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 the second birth, uh, we were born into the world by our birth mother over the nine month period. And then we were born into the world. And then there comes the second birth, regeneration and being filled with the Holy Ghost. And then uh, with those that are not born again, uh, then when they die, they got to face the second death, which is eternal damnation. Oh my God, with those that's been born again has the promise of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, though you were dead, yet shall ye live. My God, you don't have to die from your, your, your state of, of, of your sin because you've been washed and reclaimed. And so when, when judgment come, when the rapture come, or when the road is called, you don't have to die again. You don't have to be eternally damned, but you can be a part of that number that no man can number or the heavenly host, the witnesses that shall crown him king of king and lords of lords. That, that, that's what we live in. Yeah. That's why we used to sing no song. That's the start where I'm living to live again. Yes, yeah. yes. Oh, in Christ Jesus, uh, I'm free from sin. I'm living to live again. Well, let, let, let's read a couple of more scriptures and, uh, and then we, we want to pray for the saints that your consump spiritual consumption, my grandfather used to say, have been met tonight. Job chapter 22, verse 33, he says, if he return to the Almighty and you will be restored, if you remove unrighteousness far from your tent, my God, Nehemiah 1 and uh, verse 9. But if you return to me and keep my commandments and to do them, though those of you who have been scattered were in the most remote part of the heavens, I will gather them from there and will bring them to the place where I have chosen and calls my name to dwell. My God. See, it's a lot of stuff. We don't got time to go into it in just this one, one time, but uh, I, I guess it's been on my heart. I, I, you know, the teacher in me wants to release information, but I, I want you to get it while you can apply it little bit by little bit, here a little, there a little, line upon line, you know, precept upon precept. precept. Upon precept. Yeah, okay. yes, because uh, sometimes, uh, I'm guilty of it, sometimes I have so much information I want to share, but I got to remember uh, uh, there might be some babes in Christ, and it takes them a little time to chew their food before they can digest it, you know. They got to chew on it and uh, break it up and get it where uh, they can just swallow it and get it down and then let it let it do its work. Get the nutrients and the vitamins out of it and let it get in the bloodstream and go to those areas of our physical man or our spiritual man in this tent uh, to give us the vitality uh, that we need. So, so that is most important. Uh, in this day, this time, and in this hour which we live, that we understand that we are still what is considered the dispensation of grace, where we have the grace of the Father. Uh, I, I heard 
one preacher uh, called it, God has given us divine providential parole, that, that, that we are just parole. uh, parolees. And uh, yeah. Jesus, the, or the Holy Spirit now, is the parole officer <laughs> to keep us in line, to keep us in check, you know, to make sure that we don't step outside of his will and uh, to do those things that are unseemly in uh, the sight of God. And so uh, I pray that uh, all of us, as we are disciples and students of the word, that we won't just be hearers only, but we'll be careful as, as, as Nehemiah, Isaiah, and others have instructed us by God to tell us, don't just uh, hear the words, don't just hear my commandments, but be careful to do them. Be careful to obey them, all right? That, that's, that's where we are. That's where we are, returning back to God our Father so that we can continue to be in right standing and right relationship uh, so that the Father will be pleased with us. And see, it's not over until God says it's over. So you, you, you've got to understand that uh, tomorrow, the next day, the next day, the next day, every day that God gives and allows, we've got to be ready uh, with an answer to life's problems uh, to those who are seeking uh, for hope and direction than, than those of us, like it was with, with David in the 51st Psalms. When David got restored, you know, he felt, he felt it necessary. Uh, he felt so overwhelmed and responsible that he, he offered to be God's witness. Now I'm going to show transgressors your way. Now that I, I am a recipient of your unconditional love, my God, help me tonight. Where would I be? Where would Andre Sonny Wood be if God didn't love me past my sins? When I could have died in them, he, he yet loved me, you know, when I understood Isaiah, when he said all of my righteousness are as filthy rags in the eyesight of God, you know, and that happens because what you said earlier, Pastor, uh, sometimes we get so self-righteous and we want to award or reward ourselves because we done had a good day. We didn't lie today. We didn't talk about nobody today. We didn't see in the day. So we have a wild party, <laughs> you know, celebrating uh, eight hours of those 24 hours that we had a pretty good day. But then, uh, you know, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And he ain't after nothing you don't have. So once you get your joy, he ain't come. Once you get your breakthrough, he come again. You know, all of the blessings, here he comes to tempt you to doubt God. Uh, I pray that you all uh, have gotten something. If you didn't get but one verse of scripture to go back and pull out your commentaries, go on Google and, and, and search the scripture and let the scriptures talk back to you. Let them let them get into your heart and your mind. Meditate on the word of God. That's what I want you to do. Meditate on this word so that this word will get in your heart. David also said, that word have I hid in my heart that I might not yes. sin against thee. Now, he didn't, he didn't say that when he first got, got, got delivered and came to God. He, say that, he said that after a few ups and downs, a few rounds, a few uh, trials and tribulations, uh, a few tests, 
And as he matured in God, he was able uh, to relate to God's word and get it in him. Uh, that's why he says, I think it's the 34th Psalms, oh, oh, taste and see. My God, this word is good, y'all. I'm trying to tell you, it's good. It's got healing in it. It's got deliverance in it. Listen, it's the best over-the-counter, uh, uh, as they say, a uh, 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 drug or prescription you could have. The word of God, no side effects other than you lose, you lose, you, you come out of sin. That's one of the best side effects is you get thoroughly cleansed right. by the giftings and the fruit of the spirit and the Holy Ghost. Washed God. by the word. Yes, yes, yes. Listen, we want, we want to uh, pray for you all. <clears throat> I, I, I've been in prayer today continuously for our leaders, spiritual leaders. We're all under attack. Some are under uh, brutal attacks and assaults from the enemy. Uh, some within and from without, you know, people got family problems and drama and stuff going on. Uh, people are dealing with uh, mental illness, distress, depression, all kind of social ills in our society, in the world today. And guess what, my friend, because you're saved does not mean you know, you can be alienated from it. You're not immune. You know, sickness don't discriminate. Death don't yeah. discriminate. None of these things, you know, but for the grace of God, there go I. I could, I could be out on the street, homeless, a drug addict, huh? anywhere, an alcoholic. All of us, you know, need to give God glory and praise. Yes. Even though things may not be as well as you want them, thank God they are as well as they as are. They are, right. You know, when I thought to complain, I stopped myself and remembered how good God has been and how good God is. You know, I tell people all the time, if God never do anything else, he's already been good. And better, so than, better than that. Yeah. Better than that. <laughs> Bless it. <laughs> Pastor, I'm going to impose on you tonight as the Lord will lead you to pray for the people. Uh, we, we're putting our leaders. I, I said this when we, you know, during this pandemic, you know, society gave, uh, the news media gave uh, the doctors and the nurses this title essential workers, you know, and I said, well, they left out the preachers, you know, they, <laughs> the men and women of God uh, who, who got to speak a message of hope and, and speak life and deal with families of, uh, of those who died in this, in this, in this awful pandemic, you know, uh, uh, they need strength. So I, we add them to the list, the men and women of God who who are the word bearers, the fivefold ministry gifts. They are essential workers in the army of the Lord. So Pastor, Pastor Starwork, I want you to just pray that the Lord will lead you tonight before we go. All right. I'm believing God for the people that are here within the sound of our voices and those that are connecting over the uh, internet, the airways and those that will come later to, to have this knowledge and impartation through, through God. I know that it is divinely inspired and it is meant for the people at such a time as this when the world needs healing and deliverance. And um, God wants you to know that you can be redeemed, that, that this too shall pass, that it's not over. Uh, there is hope for the hopeless. Um, you know, there is a way out of no way. God has a plan for you. 
And I want you to understand that uh, when you seek him, when you ask him, when you call on his name, he hears you. And he, it may seem that God is slow to answer, but that's because he's working things out on your behalf. He's working things together for your good. And you have to have that assurance. And the only way you can have that assurance is to be a child of God. You must repent and ask him into your heart. And he is so faithful that he will forgive you of your transgressions and he will receive you as his own. Um, he'll wipe away everything, every sin, everything that has separated you. God loves you and he wants you to know that and he wants you to believe that. He wants to receive you because through you, he's going to save your children and your children's children and a whole nother generation that's to come. Uh, so he's called you to his, his, to be his own. So I'm believing right now in the name of Jesus that if you have listened to this word tonight, that you have humbled your heart and you have repented and asked God to forgive you of anything that has separated you and asked him to restore you into the house of God and restore you into his kingdom and to receive you as his child, to impart his spirit in you. You must ask for the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and God will provide you with the power of his anointing and all of the blessings, uh, the bounty of blessings that come through his anointing and through the grace, uh, his mercy, his favor, all of that, amen. And so I'm just believing for you right now in the name of Jesus, that you have asked and you have received. So now I want to welcome you officially into the kingdom. You are our brethren, amen. You're no longer a stranger, you're a brethren and you're part of the body of Christ. And the body of Christ all is many members, but we all have a responsibility and we all are accountable to God for what he places in our hands. So I'm believing God that you'll find yourself a Bible-based church. God will, if you ask him, he'll lead you to the right place where you can be taught the word of God and where you can grow in the spirit. Believing this for you tonight. And um, <clears throat> We have quite a few churches in the in interdenominational assembly of God all over the country. So uh, wherever you are, you have but to call or text, um, email us. Bishop, do you have a number or email? You can call me, Pastor Stallworth at Crown of Glory, Detroit. Crown of Glory International Ministries, Detroit. Um, and I can see if we can find some place for you to get in where you fit in. Start to do the works of God. We'll put Amen. the email address in the comment section. That's IAC Connect, IAC connect44 at okay. gmail.com. IAC44. IAC. Connect44. Amen. IAC connect44 at gmail.com. At gmail.com. Yeah. And then you just send us a, a text, uh, an email, yeah. and uh, we'll respond there they will can, be a response yeah they can send us a message by facebook comment just like Amen. on here now they can put it in the comment section 
Thank you, Deacon. God is a loving God. He's a restorer. Yeah. He's a restorer yeah. of the backslider, a restorer of the breach. Yeah. Anything that, that's lacking in you, God already knows and he's already covered it. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. It's already covered by the blood. Yeah. And the moment you say, yes, Lord. Amen. He yeah. received you. That that is that is awesome, and and we we've, we've got to understand what God is requiring of us in this this crucial hour uh, that we that we live in. I mean, it's Amen. especially with everything that's going on. The uh, Word of God talks about wars and rumors of wars. All of that is going on right now, but there's still time. There's still hope. Amen. Oh, yeah. There's still time. And a lot of people have wasted time, wasting time. <laughs> of course, they have not, they have not followed the instructions of the Lord uh, to the letter so that they can find their way to God. Everybody think they got time. If this pandemic ain't taught y'all nothing else. Tomorrow's not promised. You should know Tomorrow, that. Right but you got today. You got right now. Yes, yes. You got. Make your calling and your election sure. Today. Yeah. Choose who you will serve. And that is so paramount and important in this hour because if we don't get this message out, uh, a lot of people ask me, one of my friends, ministry friends asked me the other day, he said, why are you doing so much repetition? I said, well, you never know who haven't heard it yet. I, I can't wait to get to heaven. Well, yes, I can. I can wait to get, I ain't ready to go yet. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> what I mean by that, yeah, when yeah. I do get there. Take, take your time, Bishop. <laughs> when I do get there, I pray I make it too. I think when I get there, I want to ask Noah, I want to ask John the Baptist, you know, uh, did they receive criticism from preaching the same thing over and over and over and over? And what did Noah, Noah preach what, about 120 years or whatever? Yeah, just, just look at uh, Noah. Yeah. yeah 400, how, how many years is he preaching at? 400 years? I mean, he, he preached that thing, you know. He didn't, he didn't, and he didn't have a Bible or commentary. He and when it started this, raining, they still didn't get it. They didn't get it. They some of them was trying to run, knock on the door, but it was too late. The door was shut. They'd never seen rain before and still didn't get it. Listen, I'm telling you, uh, <laughs> brothers and sisters, this, this is a crucial hour that we've got to uh, be careful that we, we discern it right and we don't yeah. miss God looking for don't God. Miss God. Yeah. I, I told him, Bishop... Uh, when he appears in the sky, he's going to be just like that, that you see the moon sitting up there and you see the sun sitting up there. People, people wonder how in the world can he appear all over the world? Well, that same moon and that same sun is all over the world. It's shining mm -hmm. everywhere. And when God appears, he's going to be just like that. It's just, just going to be a diadem. A mighty deed. I'm just a beautiful, amazing light. And it'll be too late. It'll be too late. He too said late. in a twinkling of an eye, he's going to be gone. But those that are have an eye and are spiritual will see him. Yes. yes. We will see him. But you know, these things are hidden yeah. from them you know, that are not his. Yeah. The enemy can't see him, even if he was to stand right in front of them. They, they didn't recognize him when he was on the earth. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Well, we bless you all tonight. And God we praise God. God. Bless you, Pastor Stallworth. Uh, mm -hmm. I still see Pastor Gray. I, I don't know. We got, we didn't have some connection or something. Mm -hmm. Whatever the I had a hard time getting on. I really yeah. did. Technical difficulties might have been. Yeah. We will we will work to correct them. I don't know if it's on my yeah. end or what it is, but it is called.
technology. And, right. and, and the other thing is, as nice as it is, is man-made. <laughs> right. you know? So since man is not perfect, nothing he creates and nothing he can do. And, and Satan is the prince this. and power of the air. Yeah, yeah, ain't no telling. You know, they got so much control with satellites and, oh, and yeah. orbit and everything else with this 5G and and this, that, and the other until, you know, they, they, they can already, they, they listen to our phone calls and, right. and already they looking at our credit reports and keeping tabs on us individually. We all, we ain't nothing but a number to the government. Exactly. And then we have these uh, other outside powers, uh, other nations that are causing disruptions in our satellite transmissions mm -hmm. as part of their sabotage, you know, so mm -hmm. like espionage or whatever. Yeah. Uh, warfare that's going on right now. I, I want to do this before we go. Uh, we never really get on and do a lot of this uh when we come on for our time of sharing together but i i want those of you that will will be a part of our mission as we are preparing to do ministry abroad and to bring more broadcast your way uh the interdenominational assembly of churches we we're getting ready to start something new uh, and we want you to partner with us as we uh, are networking the kingdom to help spread the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world. And uh, we're going to do something very special that probably soon we'll be able to announce and get you going. But I want all of you and that will, uh, when you see this, if you're there with us, to sow a seed into this ministry. Preferably, I want to encourage you to become a faith covenant partner of the Interdenominational Assembly of Churches USA. Become a faith covenant partner. Now listen, we're not, we're, we're, we're not talking about just raising money, but we're talking about doing ministry. And there are times when ministry has cost attached to it. You know, and uh, we thank God for our ministry churches and those that donate as best they can. But we don't do a lot of that here uh, under IAC USA. You know, our whole main goal is to strengthen uh, the men and women of God, strengthen our churches. But uh, we are stepping out the step of faith and adding to our ministry so that we can come on uh, weekly, two and three and four times a week, rotate our churches in uh, rotation so that they will see, you will see them all over the world and wherever you are, you'll get to witness the ministry gifts that are among us, their teaching, their preaching, and uh, the ministry that they shall bring forth. So our cash app is up, uh, IAC, dollar sign IAC USA, and then we're uh, on Givelify. Uh, and just find the Interdenominational Assembly of Churches USA and give your gift uh, of any denomination. And let me also share with you this, is that um, we're not concerned with the amount of the gift. If you want to become a monthly Faith Covenant partner, just send your Faith Covenant partner a gift each month. Uh, to either give the five or to our cash app. And uh, I didn't put the address up, but we'll do it next time. But well, some people still do old fashioned mail uh, uh, and writing checks and uh, mailing them out. But uh, here is a convenient way for you to share in what God is doing and for the great things. Listen, you know, I'm used to people jumping on board after the fact. But listen, you have a part, uh, a chance to play a part of history in the making. Uh, we're, we're not just reading history, but we're moving forward uh, to make history in the part of the kingdom of God 
that God has called us to so we can help make a difference in all of humanity and in the world. So blessings to you. We want you to prayerfully consider that and uh, become a partner today. And then you can email us, uh, send us your information. And then most important of all, uh, on our Facebook page, hit the notification bell. So whenever we go live, uh, you can be live with us. You'll be notified. Go to our YouTube channel and subscribe. We have our own YouTube channel, the Interdenominational Assembly of Churches USA. Subscribe there and join us for our regular scheduled programming during the week, every week. Blessings to you all. And I'm going to, I'm going to pray because I really have a burden in my heart to pray again uh, for the men and women of God. So uh, join us in prayer. Gracious Father, we're so grateful and we're thankful that you've allowed us this opportunity. We thank you, God, for being a God of mercy, a God of grace, a God of a second chance, a God of another chance and a, another chance. We thank you for your unconditional love toward us. We thank you for our salvation and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, God, that you are our God and you're so gracious and you're so kind, you're so benevolent. Great is our faithful, your faithfulness, Lord, unto us. We praise you for all that you have done, all that you're doing and all that you promised to do. And now, God, we lift up the fivefold ministry gifts to you, the apostle, the prophet, the pastor, the teacher, the evangelist. God, you know the burden of ministry, and you know the load that each and every man and woman of God carry. Oh, God, we pray that you will relieve the burden, take away their fear, God, take away the stress, take away their weariness and their tiredness. Oh, God, we pray that you will Give ear to your servants' prayers. We pray for the, the vision that you've given each and every one of them, that you will give provision for the vision in the matchless name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray, God, that you bless them physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and financially. I pray, God, that whatever their hands touch for your name's sake and your glory, you will cause it to prosper. Now tend to their need at their dwelling place. Take care of their families. Take care of them, God. Continue to crown their head with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Help them, God. Lead them as they lead your people. Speak to our hearts, God, that we might speak as the oracles as we've been called, that we might speak revelation knowledge, that we won't speak hypotheses. We won't speak guessing games. But God, we will speak boldly that that you give in your word to speak. Now we thank you and we bless you for the victory. We bless you for what's coming. It's better than what's been for all of us. You sustained us even in the midst of what they call a pandemic. But since you are our supply, we see what's happening in the world, wars and rumors of war, we're facing inflation. We're, we're facing all kinds of financial destruction and deterioration. But thank you, God, for you are a keeper and you are the source of our supply. Yes. Thank you, God, for being thank a very you. present help thank in the you. time of trouble. Thank you, God, for being thank our you. refuge. Thank you, God, yes. for being a battle axe in war. Thank you, God, for being the wheel in the middle of the wheel, our bread of life, our water. Thank you for being our sustainer and the lifter of our heads. Now, yes. God, we pray a blanket blessing over the people of God, that whatever the canker worm, the palmer worm has heaving up, you're bringing restoration yes. to the people Hallelujah. of God. Hallelujah. We shall reclaim, Hallelujah. we shall be restored in Jesus' name. And we give you praise yes. and thanks in the master's name of Jesus. Oh, we glorify you now. Amen. Amen. Wherever Amen. you at, you ought to get up and just tell yes. it. Thank you. Amen.
and give him glory. Listen, Amen. we've enjoyed ourselves. Enjoyed you, Pastor, for sharing Amen. with us. Listen, follow us, the Interdenominational Assembly of Churches. Uh, if there's any pastors listening, if you want information on who we are, email us at IAC, uh, A I U S A uh, A C A I A C. I'm messing up myself. I A C Connect <laughs> 24 uh, at gmail.com. I'm excited. I'm getting excited. All right. Amen. But, but call us. Connect us on this page, and we will send you there. Blessings to you, and good night. Until next God time, bless you. I command the blessings of the Lord to overtake you. God bless you, sir. Same to you. Bless you. Night. Good night.